Okay, so tonight we've got a bit of a special class happening. Um, primarily because it's a night of the super red moon. And hopefully we'll be able to find out if the super red moon does enhance our spiritual abilities. Because I'm going to push your abilities to the limit. We've got a little bit of a mystery um, that we're trying to uncover. So we're going to use all of you lovely people in the class to help us try to uncover this mystery. Now in the hallway I've got a couple of sensor lights and I have a uh, proximity pod and I've invited the person who is attached to the mystery to come forward and hopefully seed your mind with some thoughts, some visions, some words and this is why you have pen and paper with you right now. Um, I just noticed that the K2 just went off a little bit and we've had indications that this special guest with us in spirit to come forward tonight. Um, we've had indications today that he is around and there definitely are indications that he is around tonight as well. Now he's not very um, used to working, I think that was a car, he's not very used to working um, in a spiritual way with communicating to the living. So we're going to have to sort of try and lead him through a little bit to try and get, get, get used to communicating in some way to us. Now, what we're hoping for is that he may be able to seed all of your minds or an individual mind with some thoughts, some visions, some words <clears throat> that will explain some of the questions that we'll be asking tonight. Um, we also have two cap balls. We have the K2 meter on top of the mystery box, which is covered in a cloth. And we're not going to tell you anything about this at all until near the end. And we'll let you know at the end what we've already found out. But what we want to do tonight to see if the super moon can enhance your abilities to pick up and clear up a mystery. To be able to communicate with spirit or to enhance your intuitions, your visions your thoughts, whatever it happens to be. We've got the K2 going off once again. Can I just ask if the spirit mail? Yeah. This is something Yeah. This is something that you can all write down on your pieces of paper as we go. Okay. Um, we won't be answering any questions whatsoever until near the end. The first thing that I want you to do is and the K2's I've got no reason to be, to be going off like that. I'm going to reset that. In fact, I might just put that just a little bit further away from the camera, just in case it's the camera that's setting it off. <coughs> I doubt it because it was far enough no, away. It's, just still, going going off. Off. it's yeah. still going off now. So um, we'd like to thank you for stepping forward. We've been inviting you all day to help us out with this experiment. And the experiment is primarily um, goes hand in hand with the spiritual and the paranormal. Um, the experiment is to try to see if the group can communicate with you in some form or another and to see if the superman a super moon can enhance our abilities to communicate with spirit and to indeed uncover the mystery of this box that is covered in the cloth now it's a rather large box so the first thing i'd like you to do is to all place your hand 
on top of the box for a couple of minutes. Now what I want you to do is just use your intuition, open your mind up, and just quietly and keep it to yourself because you'll be writing this on the pieces of paper so you won't be showing anybody else. The light's just gone off in the hallway but the cat's just walked past it so debunking that one. Um, just allow your intuition and your thoughts to go and ask for the spirit that is connected to this box to come forward, give you some words, give you some thoughts, give you some visions. So keep those words, thoughts and visions to yourself for the moment. And throughout tonight, we'll ask for the spirit that is connected to this box. If they wish, they can come close to any of these electronic devices. They can walk past the sensors, the light sensors, and they can set off any of these devices by giving it a little bit of a push or coming close to it. We'll also be using some rods tonight and we'll also be using the necrophonics. The light in the hallway has just gone off by itself again. So we're asking for the spirit that's connected to the box to come forward and the K2 is starting to go off lightly. Now the spirit's not used to using the equipment and is definitely not used to communicating with the living. So we're just going to ask the spirit that's connected to the box to see any thoughts, any words to the members of this spiritual development group tonight. Right, that's all. Sorry, I lost my thought with that. No, that's okay, yeah. That was interesting because um, Jenny was sure she um, turned her phone off and it just went, it just, um, what, alarm it just went off. off. Mm. You said you turned it off. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. perhaps the spirit was yeah, playing with Jenny's phone. Mm. Now the K2 is starting to light up. Were you playing with Jenny's phone? Can you light the K2 up even more, if you were? Need to tell him what colour he has to light up. There's a few different colours on the K2. Can you push it right up to the red? If you come really close to it, put your hand close to it. See if you can push the colours and lights up to the red. Okay, so I didn't turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go around the room first off, <clears throat> and we're just going to ask everybody what they felt. Um, did they get any words? Did they get any thoughts when you put your hand on the box? There we go. There you go. And there's a cat ball, it's just gone off. Perhaps you like the cat balls. Can you do that again? Easier. Can you move your hand across the cat ball and do it again? The K2 flicks. Yeah. He's trying. K2 is trying to flicker. Mm. And there's nothing here in this room that you set that off. There's nothing close to those uh, cat balls. Or the K2. So what did you get Bree? So I felt like I was sort of swaying side to side, almost like I was on a boat. Okay. Which is a bit random. 
Um, and I also got like a sore neck and under my chin. Yeah, there you go. K2 is flashing up. So perhaps you've hit, you're hitting on something. Perhaps the spirit is trying to indicate that you're on the money there with what you were saying. Did you get anything else? No, that was it. Okay, that's all right. That's good. Before I even touched the box, I already knew it was a head trauma. I've been getting a headache for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, but I've also got like, because I hear, I was hearing the sounds of shoes crunching in the dirt. Yeah. But I also heard the sounds of a screeching car coming to a really fast stop. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also getting like trees. So it could be a car hitting a tree. It could be... And there was also screaming sounds and that sort of stuff. Can you draw what you see? Can you Hang on, we're going to go into the drawing. After this. I was yeah. trying to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go to the drawing element shortly. Yeah. Because is there anything else that you feel about I'm the actually box feeling really sick in the stomach. Feeling yeah. sick in the stomach? Yeah. Okay. That's why I, I pulled away really yeah, early. I was yeah, like, no, I'm that's, getting, that's getting That's cool. Much. Yeah. And that's the best thing to do if you start feeling that nausea feeling and you're not understanding it. Um, you're understanding that it's not your feeling, that's that it's a feeling of the spirit or a feeling yeah. of something else that you're actually sensing. So that's good. Pulling away is good. Um, I got a really strong sense it was a male. Yep. And I felt excitement. Okay. Yep. I, I got he was a strong young male around his thirties or. Okay. Yep. Mystery. I've, I keep getting mystery. Mystery, yeah. There's a lot of mystery involved in this box. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, when <laughs> I touch the malt box, I got it again. But when you start talking about this spirit, I got mystery again. There's a lot of mystery start. involved around this spirit that we're trying to uncover. Yeah. I've got confusion, not sure why he's here. Yep. Mm. And it's funny, and I've but look, it could be just wrong, but when Hannah was talking about car crash or something, I've got before cars. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's, to me, that makes sense from what we already know. Um, so, and there's not a lot that we do know, and this is why we're actually doing this tonight, because we're sort of being, we're asking for your help to see, to give us some, leads or some ideas that we can look into so we can find out exactly what is <coughs> involved in this um, person's life and more information about this box. So Zoe, what'd you get? Sorry. Um, That's okay. Uh, so yeah, mail. I got the, the name Bill came through. I've got headache. Here's the headache. I can feel the headache. Um, I got like a battle that was a losing battle. Like there was no way he could win it, whatever he was going into. And he kind of knew it. Um, I saw like overalls or suspenders or some, some of that sort of like old I fashioned. Um, I, I wrote, too shy to be a ladies' man, very respectful. Um, something about the eyes, like squinting, whether he ha it, it's like um, blindness or injury or pain or to do with the headaches, but I focused in on the eyes, like squinting. And then I picked up, um, I became angry, I wasn't always an angry person, as if something happened that changed his personality near the end part of his life. Okay. Um, and then I sort of picked up farm or mining explosion, so yeah. Okay. Bits and pieces. I actually was getting farmer and farming and that sort of thing as well. Okay. Now that you say that. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I wasn't so supposed to be doing anything. K2 is going off again. Yeah. But I got like a hill, lots of vegetation, and like a convoy of people, then an explosion, 
and then bars, like like a cage, like a you know the old cages they used to keep monkeys and stuff in the old wooden mm. cages, stuff like that. Oh, okay. So like a stock cage, like not for even animals. Okay, yeah. so not, <coughs> a, not even not a stock, even stock cage. cage. You know, like the old, like almost made out of bamboo. Yeah, the big bamboo yep. tied together with ropes and stuff. Yep. And Okay, and the K2 is just lighting up a little bit more. So perhaps he's getting used to using the K2. He's trying. And trying to push it up. He's so trying. perhaps he's trying to indicate that he's listening to us and trying to indicate that some of what's being said is pretty right on the money. He's trying. He's getting the hang of it. <coughs> okay, well once again I want you to place your hands on the box. If you hold the hammer tight with you, to put it in the hand you put on the box here, you've got a barrier? Yeah. Okay. And what I want you to focus on is focus your intuition on where the box has been in its lifetime. <laughs> put the hammer tight flat on yeah. the box and put your head, arm on it, that way you've got a barrier. So the focus is on where the box has been in its lifetime. don't have to write this one down if you don't want to. What we'll do is straight away talk about what you feel. So shall we we'll start we'll go in reverse this time, we'll go Sally. Um Bree, was it you who said something about a boat earlier? Yeah. Yeah, my mind went straight to that sort of rocking. Yeah, that's what I got. Um and it felt like this has been a possession over generation so it's always changed hands and maybe it was stored for a bit and then it moved again so it's always been on the move tag the light went off but it was a cat that walked past <laughs> okay now any idea where what areas um, what's your first thoughts my first thought was Brazil Okay. Um. Got any other thoughts there? Not at the moment, no. Okay, that's all right. Jenny. I got something completely different. Oh no, yeah. go for it. I got um I got circus straight away. Circus? Mm. Okay. And I saw cages of the cage is like on wheels, like okay. a circus. Yeah, traveling cages. Yeah. Uh -huh. It could be symbolic of something. Hmm. Don't know. But yeah, the first word was just circus. That's all right. Hang on to that cages. thought. Hang on to that thought. It could be symbolic of something. Cool. Did you get anything else with it? No. No. Okay. Anna? I saw from its lifetime here all the way back to the trees. So I've got it bumping around in the back of a car or a ute, um, but also it bring it brought over to Australia. Um, but that was quite a long time ago. So it's done its whole rounds of being around Australia for quite a while. And then it's been brought to Victoria and all of that sort of thing. But it was brought over on a boat from probably England, so it was very early settler, sort of, um, not original boats, but the next few lots that came along. So it was more like with, either with families or with people who were entertainers. And then I got the impression of the lumber mill and I actually before earlier I always also was getting tree spirit okay mm. so I was getting all the way back to the tree okay. itself 
but I'm also when you talk about circus I'm also getting apes mm. which was a bit okay. random random but I also kind of was like when, just what you get when we were talking about like the bamboo thing I was mm. like getting like apes because it's human but it's also not it's mm. close to human but it's not quite human all right. Okay, interesting thoughts. Mm. Bree. I didn't really pick up anything. Nothing. Time. That's okay. Don't necessarily have to get every anything every time, so that's that's all good. Alright, for another time I want you to place your hands on the box. This time I want you to invite the spirit forward. And I want you to ask the spirit if they can give you a name or anything else that they can give you relating to the box. Alright, so once again, place your hand on the box. Also, I want to ask you to ask the spirit what is written on the box. Are there any words? Are there any numbers? Just sit back. And just write any names, any words, any numbers that you might feel are associated with the box or on the box. <coughs> Can you tap into my aura? It's like using a battery. There you go. Use me as a battery. Use me as a battery. Now, there's no reason why that K2 should go off. So there's nothing electrical in the box. Put your hand on my hand and use me as a battery. Get it? I know you're tired. Put your hand here. So we're going to go around the room again. We'll start with Judy this time. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? Well, I, and I know it's not on the box, but it's better. The name Bill Bailey come to mind. Bill Bailey. <laughs> so, and I know it's um, not on the box. That's the name of a song too, isn't it? Yes, mm. once you come home, home, Bill Bailey, once you come home. Okay, and that's related to the song, is yeah. related to? Oh, I know you've done me wrong. That's the, once yeah. you come home, Bill Bailey, I know you've done me <clears> wrong. Thinking about the era of the song. Aren't they, isn't it about what? soldiers and stuff? There we go, now you've got it. Isn't that song about soldiers and stuff? Been away and coming home and... I keep see, seeing, I reckon it was a movie, and I keep seeing Al Jolson with his black face. Oh, okay. I think he used to sing it. I just Did he? got a picture of Al Jolson with a black face singing it. Okay. But I'm not sure. Whether... So Al Jolson was 1940s? 
thirties, forties, was he? Thirties, forties, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Yeah, I can't you know quite remember it. The sense has gone off again, but the cats walk past it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got John. Yep. But I also got Harold Harry. Harold Harry, John, okay. I I got that didn't hold clothes. <laughs> okay. Now see I got clothing before. Yeah, okay. see I got yep. yeah. I, or I got, it was brown, and I don't know, it was a, like a worn brown paint or varnished very old brown. Okay. I got the writing is faded, faded and worn, like it's not all visible. All right, yep. And that's, that's it. Very good. Okay. Hannah. I got the word Welsh. Oh, and no, I did get numbers oh, on it. So numbers? Oh, yeah, go for it. What numbers did you get? Well, I don't know. It's funny. I got one, two, three, but, I, and, but then I got 18 something. Something, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I just got there was numbers. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was getting a whole jumble of different names, so yep. it was like many names. Okay, what names were you getting? Um... It was too much of a mishmash for me to really define okay. what it was. Then I got Welsh. Mm -hmm. And then I got 6358. And then I also got stamps. Stamps? Yeah. Stamps? Yeah. Postage stamps? Postage stamps. Okay. Postage stamps? Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. stamps when you're travelling. You got... Or even like big rubber. Oh, okay. Yep. Those as you... well. Like I've got both. Yep, like the rubber yeah. stamps are you stamping yeah. well, I think documents they used with to, or whatever. On travelling boxes and cases, they'd have these big stamps. Yeah. Okay, yep. Okay, cool. Very good. Great. So I got the name Dan or Danny or Daniel. None of them really felt like it was the right one, but that was that Dan was sort of what I was getting. Um, I also got the letter H in regards to the box. Um, and numbers on it, but in sort of like a rainbow sort of pattern on the box. Okay. All right. Mm. Cool. Um, as I said before, I got the name Bill, and then I saw sort of like <coughs> shipped from blah 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 or property of blah blah blah. I couldn't make out which one it is, but shipped from somewhere was the first thing that came to mind and the headaches keep mm. keep hanging around i i okay. almost feel like <clears throat> the top half of his head isn't just in pain it's missing like, yeah i feel like you know was it an accident was it a suicide is he, is he feeling ashamed is he guilt feeling guilt and then i get that he forgets what happened to him it, because it comes and goes in bits and pieces because of the injury but he but then I heard bird song and I found him really easily distracted and comforted by bird song. Um, just as something random. And I also picked up, he, he felt like he lived a soldier's life and all the trauma that comes with it, even if he wasn't literally a soldier. Um, There's a mental health thing And then I, then I saw a pickaxe for some reason as well. But I didn't get any letters or numbers so that came out of it. Mm, okay. Cool. All right. And I want you just to close your eyes for a moment. And I'm just going to push our little friend in spirit once more, just he's very getting, quickly. He's getting really tired. I know, he, I know he's getting very tired. We'll just one little, last little push before we stop for the moment for, with him. <clears throat> Just going to push him to see your minds or one of your minds with what happened to him. What are your first thoughts? And what's your first intuitions that you get? Do you get any visions? Quickly focus on that and then write down what you get. I want to thank the Spirit for coming forward. You're quite welcome to have a bit of a rest now while we have a little bit of a break too.
and then we'll move forward once again for a short while to try and uncover a little bit more of the story behind this box. So very quickly, well, what have we all got? Who was it? Hannah. I just so had what? a gunshot to the head. Gunshot to the head? Um, but suicide. Yeah. Um, so he was very post-traumatic stress, okay. very mental health split sort of thing, and he shot himself. So you got somebody who uh, had a lot of stress it and was it was to the point that they were ready to just do anything to stop the head yep, from doing they were at that what point. it was doing so they've just gone no nah, that's it fuck it okay so they've either had that thought or actually done it yeah one yep. of the two one of the two okay and i would say that that they've done that okay to yeah. push me because i know that feeling Okay. <laughs> I I actually got explosion, possibly a mine, like he possibly could have been a soldier. Okay. Um he didn't have direct contact with the mine, mm -hmm. but he it was the results of the mine. Okay. You know, the one just extend on Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. So um, I, I didn't get a whole lot, maybe because his energy is starting to yeah, it's starting run out, to but rain a bit, yeah. and he's done really well. Yeah, yeah. But um, just what I was getting earlier with the the head injury and an explosion of some sort, and um, that's that's all I can sort of okay, piece together. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Right. So I wrote down earlier when. We did it the first time about the sore neck and under the chin. I was wondering whether it was a gunshot, yeah, like a suicide under mm -hmm. the chin, mm -hmm. or if it was being strangled and the pressure of someone's thumb sort of sitting, yeah, okay. right there. Was, it's like a yep. pop, yeah, yep. like there's a. It was. I was getting yeah. either that gunshot being really strangled by someone, or even like a noose. Yeah, there's a very sudden cell. like, yeah. And that mm. pressure to the neck. Yep. Cool. Cool. Excellent. And it's like he's really confused. Yeah, yeah. look at the first thing I got was confusion. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And why was he here? He doesn't yeah. know why he's here. He's sort of like, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here, but I'm yeah. here. You, I'm, doing I'm all right what with helping, doing? but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The whole thing is, um, the whole thing is that it would be confusing for him trying to communicate with us because nobody has communicated with him before. And it's been a long time that he's been on um, the lower rash line. He hasn't crossed over. Okay. I actually um, got the confusion was because he's on the other side. He's, he's not living. He's Oh, so he's still oh, like yeah, well, the, yeah, the no, he, he, experience yeah, he is, is still adjusting. Yes, he has passed. Yeah. Yes, he's um, passed, but I, it's like, why? And then know, actually, why well, here? it's a good question, um, actually. Has he actually acknowledged it? Crossed over, or That's sort of is he still on the lower astral? Yeah. Um, the other night when I was here and we and Beth and I talked, yes. yep. he needs a. I got the whole. I was going to say, or a candle a going or something. Yeah. Yeah. I got the whole just that boost of yeah. title pole yeah. thing, yeah. and it's I'm sorry, it's got a bear on it. But, you know. but tonight I got uh, the metal cup is good. The yeah. bit around the neck, there was something Always holding him up that was like this was all torn. It was like you know when they hang someone with a noose and it's yeah. tight here, but this it wasn't a noose. It was something else. It was all torn here. So it was barbed wire. Yeah, something like that okay now i'm just aware of the time and it's coming up to nearly the time of the uh eclipse we want to get out and see it so we're going to do a big reveal of what the box is but first off i just want you to go through what you've written just have a quiet look at what you've written just so you can remember what you've written it's not something from Target. So we can see. No, it's not a Target box. <laughs> no, it's like a, it's like a box. 
like one of those uh, plastic well, tattoos or something. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the winner gets to it put it together. <laughs> it could have something to to do with being a target. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely not a target it's box. A giant this box one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, down, so just want to say yeah. happy birthday to Sally too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so we just had some coffee and cake and some <laughs> some lollies, yeah. bits and pieces. Because you know we know how to do do it right now, class. That's right. <laughs> okay, That's really so what just can. remembering yeah. what you've okay. written. Gonna do a little reveal of the box. So, hold on for one sec, I'll just position myself so we can get the camera to get a good look at it as well. Alright, just remembering what you've written, we're going to reveal a box and we'll explain a little bit about the box, of what we know anyway. Alright, so... You ready? Go for it. It is... A World War II footlocker and it belongs to a RAJ Smedley. Now we don't know what the RAJ stands for. We don't know the their initials of obviously his first middle and middle names. There are a group of numbers on it. NX164396, which we believe is a dog tag number. And the box itself um, was commissioned by, we think, or the person that had joined the 1st Australian Armed Car Squadron. And it was destined to go to Hiroshima in Japan in 1946 after the war to help with the um, the cleanup. The cleanup, I suppose you call it. Is it after the atomic bomb? Yeah. This is after the atomic bomb. So this box was destined to go to Hiroshima in 1946. So the guy, R.A.J. Smedley. From what we know, we've got some scattered information. We've got a couple of different trains of thoughts of information, which we don't know what is true and what is not. So we might get Bethany to go through some of the information that she knows about the box. Hey, this box has been in my possession since I was 14, 13-ish. Started high school. It belonged to my dad's cousin so my aunt's only my aunt's son on my dad's side of the family my aunt Linda her son who is obviously R.A.J. Smedley but the family knows him and I've grown up knowing him as Uncle Sonny my dad tells the story of Uncle Sonny not coming back from the war and being a POW and being decapitated on the decapitated by the Japanese on the Burma Railway. I had a feeling there was a soldier. I don't know how accurate that is. As with most people's families, there is a lot of um, family stories that have half-truths, sort of truths, and a little bit of truth. I don't know how true that is, but I have had, th this box has literally been everywhere with me. So do you know what the RAJ stands for? No. no. Their Aunt Linda was my dad's mother's sister. My grandmother, her name was Hilda, and her surname was Lawson. Linda's surname was Lawson, Smedley was a married name. I have absolutely, I have little um, information about my dad's side of the family at all. I was, this box has literally been in our family ever since I can remember. When I was a kid, it used to be stored in our cubby house, so one of those old tin shed cubbies of the 80s, and it was painted black. 
but as you can see there's actually the army green underneath it and the writing was covered it just looked like a big black box and as a kid and not realizing what I could do then that I can do now Sunny <laughs> Sunny what I knew now is I used to tell people there was a ghost that lived in the trunk this is when I was I don't know six or seven and all the friends I grew up with and I'm still friends with would vouch for that and I would tell them there's a ghost that lives in the trunk and that ghost is there to protect me okay two meters away yeah hi Sunny when my parents divorced this fell into the possession of, of my mum I don't know how that happened but there was a lot of to and, and froing before my my parents finally divorced when it did when my mum did divorce and we moved into a house on our own it came with us and it sat in the back room of our house it was a big rumpus room with a tile, tile floor one day I was looking at it and I realized and I was you know probably early high school late primary school early high school and I realized there was words on it so I took something sharp and I actually chipped and he's agreeing with me I've actually chipped all the paint off the lettering and when I realized what the trunk was I asked my mum and she said it was an old World War II trunk and I said can I have it because at the time it wasn't being used for anything and she said yeah why not because it would get all my you know teenage crap off the floor in my bedroom <laughs> and it has followed me everywhere ever since every house I've moved into every place I've gone you know when I went to uni it was in my bedroom when I moved in with my ex husband my boyfriend at the time it came with me when we moved to Sydney it was with me I've had such a strong connection to this trunk throughout my life that when it wasn't here I would get very 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 anxious when people mentioned it because in my head it was meant to be with me it's the only link I have to my to my dad I don't own anything else of my grandparents or my aunts it, this is it we don't I don't have photographs I don't have I didn't meet my nana or my aunt Linda because Aunt Linda, Linda died shortly before I was born and Nana died not long after the same year I was born so I had no connection to them at all and to top it all off up until very a few years ago I didn't have contact with my dad Sorry. regular contact with my dad on a regular basis so a lot of what you were saying and while you were all talking I was actually talking to Sonny trying to help him figure out how to do what we were asking him to do because he's this is the first time I've been able to talk to him because it's the first time I've understood my gift so I've always had I've always seen a soldier um, particularly when I was unwell I used to see the soldier and I never knew what I never knew what that meant but when my mum recently came to visit I finally got my trunk back and it was a long arduous tale because I haven't had this in my possession for nearly four years five four, five years and every time anyone mentioned it I would get exceptionally upset part of the reason is the link I have to the trunk and the energy and the spirit that is attached to it but part of it is the contents can I also ask you yeah. do you now feel like Sonny's an old friend he is an old friend yeah. yeah yeah he's been around me a long time and when my mum brought this and I put when Rick finally got it into the house I just sat here and put my hand on it because it finally felt I finally felt like I, I was, home. was home Bethany yeah. has always mentioned um, feeling the soldier around her but she wasn't really able to connect to the soldier no. didn't really know what the soldier who the soldier was or what the soldier was no. about the interesting thing with the whole storyline is there there is one storyline where he actually um, 
uh, died by decapitation or execution by the um, Japanese. Japanese. I don't know if it was execution, yeah. we'll call it, because we're not sure if it was decapitation or not. Um, yeah. There's a couple of there's two different stories there. Yeah. On the Burma Rail, while building the Burma Rail. But the curious thing that really got us going, and this is part of the mystery too, is that this box is marked, um, stating virtually that um, this R.J. Smedley, R.A.J. Smedley, he had joined at some point the first Australian um, armoured car squadron, which was destined for Hiroshima, Japan. It's written on the box. Now the thing is, the armoured car squadron itself, I think, was um, was uh, created around about 1941 or earlier, probably even 39. And the sensor light's just gone off up the back there, and there's been no cats walking past. It's because he's coming for this. So, Sonny, if you want to come in as well, please do so. Um, the thing is that the car squadron, he jo at some point he joined the car squadron and was destined for Hiroshima, Japan. But the whole thing was that this car squadron was destined for Hiroshima, Japan after the war had finished. Now, if he was executed on the Burma Rail during the war as a POW, well, that doesn't really click, does it? No, he wouldn't. You know, he can't have been executed during the war that. years and gone across to Hiroshima, Japan after the war had finished. So that's the massive big mystery that we're trying to solve. And since my trunk has a, and I do refer to it as mine because, well, yeah. yeah, you know, because mm -hmm. it's not mine and it's mine, but it's his and it's mine. Since it's arrived, um, I've had a few, I've been able to communicate a few times with Rods, and he's given me a few different details that don't match what I was told as a child. Um, but also, And I get quite emotional about this because it does feel home. It does feel... I don't have a lot of family on the other side that feel like family. But this trunk feels like home. And not having it with me, I honestly felt like part of me was missing. I honestly felt like something was wrong and like I said the contents of this that, that's in this trunk also makes also is very important to me because this trunk is a time capsule this trunk has pretty much any pretty much stuff from every facet of my life up until I moved here when it didn't come with me have you gone through it I have I've taken some things out because Carl has wanted to see them. I've had I've got birthday cards that have been sitting in this trunk since I was seven years old. I've got birthday cards and Christmas cards from my grandmother. I've got birthday cards my dad gave me. I've got old school assignments that I was proud of. I've got the letter that I was sent by the university to say that I'd gotten accepted. I've got the piece of paper with my student number on it from my HSC, my year 12s. Um, What's your a, student number? I can't remember. That's why it's in the box. No, I'm just wondering <laughs> because everyone got different numbers. Yes, mm -hmm. it's yeah. in there. It's in the. Yeah. It's in the box. It's six, seven, something, something. Um, I've got in this box stories that I had written because I used to like writing short stories. You would not be able to. They're completely illegible because I'm dyslexic and I couldn't read until I was. 14, 15. I couldn't read fluently until I was 14. I couldn't write fluently until after I left school. So there are books, there are certificates, there are thing, letters that my friends have given me over the... I had one friend who used to write me a letter every time she visited um, where I was living because her grandmother lived literally 
two houses up from mine. So she would drop a letter in the letterbox before she left. So, so it's of, become quite a time capsule. It is, yeah. And it is, what is in here is the belongings that my ex-husband didn't destroy. So he destroyed everything else that I had. But in here, he didn't destroy it. So that's why it's him. That's another reason why it's important. Okay. And Sonny knows that and he protects it. All right. We've got about 20 minutes before the moon starts going. I wish you knew what the RHA stood for. Yeah. There is a theory in my family, there's a lot of Rexes. Rex is a very common name. Yes, and, it was back then. Yeah, and Rex can be short for Robert. It can be short for, there's also on my dad's side of the family, my dad's father, there's also a lot of Reginalds. So Aunt Linda's, Aunt Linda's father, you know, possibly, there's a lot of Reginalds, there's a lot of Rexes, there's a lot of Walters, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of Jameses. Mm -hmm. My theory is that it's either a Robert, a Rex or a Reginald. Okay, so on that, I uh, want everybody just to very, very quickly, what's the first name that pops into your head regarding this RAJ? Nobody knows definitely. No. I got Roger Arnold John. <laughs> Roger Arnold John. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Reginald. Yep. Okay. Bree, what do you reckon the first name is? Well, I'm still getting that Danny Dan. So <laughs> that's your brother who's popped Danny. in. Yeah, Danny's. it could be. I mean, my, my Danny, brother's... Danny's in the bloody um, dolly My brother's um, passed away and he's, he quite often pops in. Yeah. So you're he's probably getting him. So, what do you reckon, Seth? Well, my... Um, I'm being um, affected by something else because I lost my great-grandfather on the Burma Railway. He mm. was also a prisoner of war. Um, who never came home <clears throat> and his name was Ross Alexander so I'm getting okay because it's RA yep. yep um but I'm thinking Robert yep but I'm sort of getting my own great-grandfather coming in too yep I keep getting a Robert too yeah yeah so it's quite possibly uh, who knows we're, we're very unsure the, of the Danny moment. that you said you were getting Yesterday we were saying that A was possibly Andrew, which yeah. could be Danny. Sure, yeah, for Danny. Andy, Andy Danny, yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. And Jay's now, either John or jo John or Jay. <clears throat> mm. um, now I just want to do a couple of very very quick things before <coughs> we go and have a look at this super moon thing. Um, does anybody want to have a go at a set of rods and we'll ask a couple of quick questions? Do you want to have a go? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you want to have a go? I've never used rods before. Never used rods before? You want to try? I don't think I have either. Yeah. Well, you've had a muck around. Pass them? Mine. Muck around, pass but them not on. really like. Oh. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Ask some questions. Yeah. We'll ask the questions. Oh, yes. And um, let's see what you get. Oh. You right? Low battery? Yeah. That would be Eric. Eric, stop mucking around. Santa, please. Hold them out like this. Give them a bit of space between them and tuck your thumbs on and move your hands down a little bit. Can't hold your thumb on the top. You've got to tuck no. your thumb on I was on trying to do that to stop it from swinging. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> this was Abby no, watching you TV last night. No, but they were them. swinging without me doing anything. Yeah, that's <laughs> the whole yeah, thing. That's the whole yeah, thing. That's the whole you thing. Know, you you can, 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 oh, okay. No, I mean, until the questions are. <laughs> just put them on herself. <laughs> no, yeah. that's, it'll be fine if you do that. Santa. Come on, spirit. Santa. 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 Thank you. Just because I'm a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Enter. Right. Stop marking it. Eric. Can you cross the rods for yes? I'll ask Spirit to cross the rods for a yes. There you go. Okay. And we'll ask the Spirit to open up the rods for a no. 
push them out for a knot. Keep going. Why isn't the other one moving? Because you have your two tens. There we go. Okay. okay. And the hand has still got hers crossed. Just relax. Relax. Don't look at the end of the rods. Look straight ahead. Don't pay attention to the rod. There you go. Okay. So we're going to just ask uh, for the spirit that is connected to this box to come forward and can you push the rods into a yes position when we mention your correct first name so we're going to go through a list of our names and as soon as we get to your name can you please cross the rods? I'm going to start off with the name Rick. I'm going to call out the name Reginald. I'll call out the name Rex. A little bit of movement on Jenny's there, and we've got a cross. Don't you're on Okay, we've got a. Focus on the end of the rod. So we've got a possible Rex. Okay, just relax your arms and straighten out the rods again. I'm going to call out some more names. Can you cross the rod rods if we hit your name? What about a Robert? Is your name Robert? Is your name Roger? Who's got another R name? Rex, you haven't tried. You've tried Rex. Rex. Oh, Richard. Ryan. Richard. Richard. What about a Ryan? Rupert? 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 Yeah, I just felt it really shake. Yeah. Okay. Can we try Rex again? Is your name Rex? He's trying. Get the tips He's up. going one at a time. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll ask. Is your name Rex? There you go. Okay, we've got a possible Rex. What does the A stand for? Does it stand for Andrew? This is your strongest side, but yeah. you need to loosen oh, up. Oh, mine just side. crossed. Yeah. Is that Good. because of you moving? Or? No, that's not my aura. Mine aren't going up. So okay, so center the again. rods once again. Center. Just center. Make sure your tips are up so that way. Does the A stand for Anthony? One cross from Jenny. Is it Andrew? He's getting confused, Archibald. Okay. He's, he's getting you... confused. It's not he's you're asking one thing and then you're asking something else and you're moving backwards and forwards. Yeah, okay. He's not used to it, he's getting confused. We might just You need to ask one of the house spirit to help him. Because they're stronger and they know how the rods work. Okay. One of the house spirit. Ask Eric. He's sitting by. Okay, yeah, Eric, Eric's Eric, to play anyway. Eric, can you come, can you come forward and help with this one? Okay, okay we've got the. I've got a yes. Yeah. K two going off as well. Yeah. There's Eric. Hey, buddy. Can you help with this Ooh, one, Eric? Wow. Yeah, he's a lot stronger. Wow. Okay. I can feel that this time. We're going to go back to your first name again, the, the spirit's first name that's connected to the boss, that box. Um, Eric, 
and the spirit can you connect connect together and help us with your first name is your first name robert can you cross the rods if it is got a strong cross off the back that's yes eric you need to help him he doesn't understand is your first name rex i've got a no at the back that's eric playing Maybe Eric. Yeah, he tries to use the head. Oh, right. Eric. Have we got? Don't <laughs> ask Klaus. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, Eric's a trick. I think we're getting too many spirit involved in this one because there's a lot of house spirit, and I think they're Klaus, sort of just pushing the rods around. Klaus, can you step? Can you? Can you step forward, Eric? You step back. Um, he's <clears> he's here. Yeah, I want to see Eric. No, as in like. I know he's here. Can you help Sonny use the rods? Because he's getting tired and he doesn't understand how they work. Can you answer yeah. for him? Yes. We've got two yeses. Can you answer for him, Klaus? Yeah. Okay, we've got a little bit of confusion yeah. here. Okay. okay, we're just wanting to know the first name of Mr. Smedley here. Is it a Rex? Cross the rods if it is. Yeah. Okay definitely okay relax the rods again just open up the rods relax is it a robert i think rex is short for robert i don't know don't think so i don't reckon no i think they're picking I think up we're... your guy and rex robert. and richard be the same name i'm not work not too um hmm, not too sure no, Sir Robert's standing right. back there, he's blocking the door. Yeah, so we get a little like bit of confusion with the rods here, so we'll just... You know, it's I've like, just got a feeling it's short for Richard. But that's I'm what happens possible. when ask we him. get... Um, ask him. Is your name Richard? Yes. Ask him if it's... You ask him, Jenny. Ask him if it's a, if he's got a shortened version. Have you? Is your shortened, shortened version of Robert Rex? Of Richard. Of Richard, is your shortened version of Richard? Bricks. Okay. There you go. Now we've got two there crosses go. there. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's Richard. quite possible. All right. Yeah, well, I had oh, wow. That, that was a sharp. I had thing. an uncle Rex. So I just had a feeling his name was Richard. It just yeah. come to me then. Okay. Is the A on the box short for Alexander? Only one swing. Yeah. No, that's not Right, just going to close off here for a minute. Yeah. Okay, got the necrophonics going. I'd <laughs> just like to ask, what is your first name? The spirit that's connected to the box, what's your first name? <laughs> Rex. Rex. You put your energy towards what I'm holding in my hands. You could possibly tell us. Sonny, did you, do, did you pass away in Burma? Did you pass away in Japan? Did you go to Japan at all? Were you part of the Australian Army? Car squadron.
the story that you were executed in Japan, is that true? Winifred. It's on Dad's side of family. Okay. Were you executed on the Burma Rail? Or did you survive and go to Hiroshima? Someone else is just like Is there anything that you would like to say? Aunt Linda, have you just walked in? I think his mother's here. This has gone permanently green. Bye. Okay. Bye. Do you know who I am? Do you know who my dad is? We're very pleased you to be here. And we invite you to stay so we can communicate some more over time. Thank you for communicating with us tonight. So was all that spirit, the whole thing? The majority of it was, yeah. <laughs> yes, they just agreed with you. <laughs> So, did I hear one who say fish? Yeah, they yelled my name out all the time. Yeah. Normally, we have, a, yeah. normally, normally we have a speaker that we put it so we can all hear it properly, but we just wanted to do that quickly before we go out right now to have a look at the full moon. There's a gap coming. Well, <laughs> it's cloudy, <laughs> so we're not really seeing too much. We're seeing a slight sliver. And I think that's all we're going to see and that tonight. Doesn't even look red. There's a few gaps in the clouds. Certainly can't see anything on the that phone. Was, that was a disappointment. Okay, we're back inside. Are you going to be right? Um, if I like this, I'll put it down the other end of the room. It's, um, it's intense. If I put it down the other end of the room, yes. are you going to be right? Yes. You've got water. Okay. Yes. I didn't want to do it. I actually got a drink. Yes. I didn't want to do it in case. And I'll do my eyes. Yeah. Okay. Just like to thank everybody for coming tonight and having a good go with this. And uh, actually, it's quite amazing because some of what you've actually wrote down and picked up before we uncovered the box does relate to the storyline of what we have heard about Mr. R. A. J. Smedley and the box. So it's pretty interesting. Now we our guides are supposed to be telling us what yeah. why do we all get something different and sometimes wrong? Because it's not wrong. You just get everyone picks up on it imagine everyone's got have you seen my favourite Martian with the two aerials yes. that come out? Imagine everyone's got different aerials and they're all on different frequencies. So if you're tuned to one frequency and Hannah's tuned to another frequency and Bree's tuned to something else and Jerry's No, yeah, but I mean like different, the wrong name. Or yeah, it's not the wrong name. It all links in together. You but could be hearing just, the name of the person who was the great uncle of this what was the name? What was the name you got? John. John. Well, there's well, a J. There's a J. There's a J. There's a J. Yeah. Oh, and I've got a Harold or Harry. Yeah, well, see, I don't know a lot about my grandma my dad's side of the family and I don't know a lot about Aunt Linda's husband. Yep. So it could be there's a Harry 
on that side of the family. Oh, yeah. Well, they were best mates in Burma, and now you know they travel together yeah. in Burma, and yeah. now they travel together in yeah. the afterlife. My gra my my um grandmother's name, Nana's name was Hilda, Hilda, Harold. So it depend. It's yep. not wrong. You don't get the wrong thing. Everything is linked. It's just that you get a different. A different piece of the same story. So that Bill Bailey, which was a war song, yeah, it dropped, yeah, yeah, because it was well it related, and it was saying, war. "Come home, Bill Bailey, come home." It's a matter of also your guys know how to give you particular signals. Yeah. So like the song would come to your mind, whereas somebody else would be hearing more things of a different type. Or yes. you mm -hmm. might, you might, because some people see and some people hear. So you have a thing where you hear music. So the only the logical way your guides would give you information is through song. I see. So if someone wants, if my guides give me something really important, chances are I'll see it. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm very art orientated and I used to love theatre. Sometimes I get the line out of a movie or I get the name of a book because I like literature. I studied English lit at uni. So I might get the name of a book or a line out of a book or a line, the line of a poem. So or a song. Or a song. I've had too many, thank you. <laughs> so I had two pieces of cake, I'd better not. <laughs> so it's not necessarily that you're wrong, it's just your guides have to give you information so you understand that that's what they're giving them. If your guide would if your guys gave you a vision, you wouldn't have a freaking clue what to do with it. But if they go, Oh, they gave you the song, we go, Oh well I understand that now. So it's like Hannah hears more than she sees. Yes. So she will hear stuff. So her ears are more tuned than her eyes are. Her third eye is. You're you're kind of tuned like you're tuned into musical theatre. So you're you're a, hear. You're a vibration. And yet I don't yeah. listen to songs no. or music or anything. No. I listen to talk back radio. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> that's because you've got the songs in your head. If you want, yeah. and Bree's sitting in the corner and she she tends to get keywords. So she tends to not get a lot, but the words that she gets is important. Yeah. So she doesn't. <laughs> I've got the letter H. Yeah. See. So the thing was, she gets keywords. So and the keywords that she gets leads to something else. And, and what you've written down there, if you if you actually look through it, you'll find that you've got a lot of things. You'll find that there's right. some stuff that um, symbolically relates to something within the story of this box that we already oh, know. Yeah. I didn't say it, I had possible soldier. Oh, yeah. yeah, you there. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Oh, I had explosion but like possible soldier. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of explosions around him. Yeah. And someone yep, um had to build a railway. Someone said they heard screeching tires oh, and that. screaming and a sudden stop. It's a car he worked, squadron. He worked in he was in the car yeah, the um, army yeah, car heard squadron. Like cars and yeah, yeah, and then people screaming and explosions and stuff. Yeah, and you said water. Yeah, motion of the water. Well, it would have yep. had to have come by boat. Yeah, yep. Might See, it have even been the car if it was. Yeah, but it, he could have. It could have come. It wasn't necessarily a boat. It, it was just that been, oh, rocky. Would have been probably both anyway. Yeah. 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 But see, we. I don't know how this got back from wherever it was. Or part if of, it even went. Yeah, part if of it the even story. Went. Part well, of the story. Say, his belongings could have come back in. You know, well, see, the actual. Mm -hmm. The actual trunk. Excuse me, Sonny. Like if he died in, did die that in was Japan me. or somewhere, maybe they sent his belongings home in the trunk. We'll see the actual trunk. And what is the trunk made out of? It's tin. It's tin. Okay. But the actual trunk. And I'll open it for you. It's all lined. And I did have. I don't get clothes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's never <laughs> held. It, it's never held clothes. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. always held what. But it's got the green lining, the silk lining on the inside, so you can put your hand on the inside and you can feel what's actually, you can actually get a picture other, of what was in it. The other thing I want to mention too is... Yeah, uh, I had, didn't hold clothes. You wanted to know my student number? That was my student number. <laughs> Just pick it out of the top. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention too is that um, this car squadron was originally um, set up in Pakistan or in Victoria. Um, but... The car squadron actually went to an island in um, Indonesia before they actually went across to Japan. So the rocking of the boats and everything like that, they would, would have had to have gone by ship 
to Japan. And when I did a little bit of um, research into this particular island, there is a only a, a couple of small towns on the island, but one of them was stated it was an army. There was an army camp there, and there's an army camp museum. Yeah. So we're thinking that. It very much relates to part of the storyline where this trunk may have gone across to this island in Indonesia before it actually went across that would make to Japan. Absolute sense. Yeah. And With that's where you get the rocking of the waves and the water yeah. and the boat. The irony of it all is that on my mum's side of the family, we do have a, a, a relative that was in the RAF who was shot down over the English Channel a couple of weeks before the war ended and he didn't come home and my grandmother used to wear his army issued watch that went to the bottom of the ocean with him and came back and it was working when they found his body so we have that side of things as well so we've got all of the oh, he was a he was a um, navigator of a Lancaster bomber so we have that and we have all the information for that and then we have not a whole lot for Sonny I've looked through some war records and um, from what I could find pop it back up there. Yeah, sorry son. From what I could find, there are quite a few Ars medleys. And there was one that um, was stated as being executed by the Japanese and it did have this dog tag number but it also had a second dog tag number. Now, the thing is that we know in the war years that sometimes um, dog tags were swapped or passed on to somebody else for one reason or another. So perhaps the second dog ta tag may have belonged to a friend of his that actually died and he took, Mr. Smedley took, yeah, yeah, took exactly. the dog tag or they swap the dog tags to swap identities or for some reason because they were running and hiding from the Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. The the thing with this trunk is, and you, you see me, I've done it all night, I've sat here and put my hand on it, because to me this is home. And when, when my mum actually brought it in, the first thing I did was do this, because it does feel very much like greeting an old friend yeah. and and I do get emotional about it, and emotional about it because I don't have that connection to my dad's side of the family and I've only just reconnected with my dad and I've asked him about the trunk but my dad's nearly in it, he's nearly 80. When it come home did you decide that years will never be separated again? Oh, it, 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 it's not going anywhere. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't. Oh, any, yeah. I just got it wasn't as soon as it came into your house, you thought, I'm not yeah. never going to be separated we'll see, again. Yeah, no, because I never wanted to be separated from it in the first no. place. But um, because when the circumstances of me leaving um, New South Wales were a little bit trying, um, Rick will tell you, I, every time I couldn't, every time I tried to get this and I failed I was completely beside myself I was absolutely beside myself and you know getting to know my dad as an adult because you know my parents divorced when I was 10 and my dad still lived in the same town but we didn't I didn't have a lot to do with him for you know family reasons and personal reasons and his reasons and other people's reasons is he still alive? yeah I call my dad every two weeks can't you ask him? What? The name. My dad, he, he doesn't, doesn't remember. He doesn't really know. He no. just remembers His the, Uncle the Sonny. guy as Sonny. Oh, His right. Uncle Sonny. He doesn't... That's the family only knew him as Sonny, and I don't know how he got that name. I'm assuming it was because he was a happy-go-lucky sort of guy. Oh, well, I keep saying of, blonde hair. Yeah, and so. he was a ray of sunshine. My dad's side of the family are all dark-skinned and dark, dark eyes, dark skin, dark hair. So Carla is very much my dad's side of the family, the way she looks. Um, my brother, my younger brother has dark eyes, dark hair. His youngest son has the dark eyes and the dark hair. So that's dad's side of the family. I've traced dad's side to a certain point 
and my brother has actually done one of those DNA tests. But the problem is I, I couldn't keep my subscription up to that particular website. So I'm going to have to resubscribe and get back into it. Do you know the library has a free ancestry kit? Yeah, the irony is this, this he did his training at Pakapanyol. My uncle, we used to come and visit my uncle in Melbourne when I was a kid because my dad's brother used to live in Melbourne. And up until I met Rick and I came to Ballarat, I thought I'd never been to Ballarat. The truth was I was here when I was very young on one of those trips. So it, this has probably gone from Victoria to wherever he went and then came back to New South Wales and then has literally travelled around with me and now it's come back to Victoria. And the, the, the question still remains, did this guy actually die somewhere else other than Japan? My question is, did he die? Did this trunk actually get to Japan? Oh. Did he Was actually it just get to the? Did he actually requisition leave the to Japan, but it never actually got there? I have a feeling that he tells me he did, and he's shown me he has, mm. but I don't think he. I think this was a new thing. I think he'd been over before, and he came back, and then he went again. And, and was there an accident on the way back from Japan, and that's why he never actually you know, plane crash or whatever. Yeah. And he never actually got back to Australia. Like, we, I have not... If that was the case, I'd be very, have been very lucky finding that trunk. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know how this got back. Well, if the Australian was... Army were usually pretty good at, you know, somebody... Well, yeah. That's true a bit, that's a bit slow, like but, that. you know, depends on yeah. the But about. see, the thing yeah. is, too, yeah. if he was a POW, he wouldn't have had the trunk. No. no. They would have sent one of the... As my grandmother used to say, the yellow telegrams. Mm. But the trunk would have been, you know, if he worked on the Burma Railway and didn't die, the trunk would have been somewhere else. Yeah. So they would have got it. One of the, my grandmother used to tell me about the yellow telegrams. And that's a mystery how it got back. Yeah. <laughs> the yellow telegrams are the telegrams yes. he used to get when someone, was, someone was, was missing in action. And my grandmother used to tell me that the guy they usually the postman postman would either deliver the yellow telegram or that someone either the local priest or the local police officer or something would hand the family the telegram mm. if that's the case and he was deemed missing in action and this found his way found its way back eventually where's the where, telegram where's the telegram yeah because he would they would have got a dreaded yellow telegram all I remember is that my dad had a chocolate box. It was one of those tin chocolate boxes and it had photographs in it. And I've actually, there was a photo of Uncle Sonny and I very proudly took that to school in primary school and held it up at Anzac Day and saying, this is my Uncle Sonny and this is what happened to him. And it was one of those black, those um, plastic grocery bags you put the fruit in because hay that would protect it. And, um, you know, you give it to a nine-year-old. <laughs> and I can remember doing that. And it was a photograph of him in his war, in his uniform with his slouch hat. And he's the rising sun on his, the rising sun badge on his hat and everything. And that was Uncle Sonny. And he was a very young, clean-shaven gentleman. Who is the gentleman that I see standing in the doorway right now. So that's him. But I see him as I saw him in the, in the, in the photograph so he's in black and white he's not in color he's he doesn't look green he they're not green he's in black and white so he's in black and white shades of gray because that's how you know nine-year-old bethany saw it so he's here and he's been here since the since the trunk arrived and he's been wandering around the house and darting in and out and sitting up with me while i've been in pain for the last three days and watching rick on the computer and you know putting his head around the door of Carla's room and talking to the cats and chatting to the budgie and going out with Rick to have a cigarette and coming out with me when I need a constitutional smoke on the back step and so he's been doing all that because this is home and it's not necessarily home is where you know every home to him is where I am and so he'll be basically he had home in a box yeah home was the box and he has perused what's in that box and he has filled his his head with everything about me 
and my life from when I was a little kid telling people that there was a ghost in the trunk and he lived there because that's how I saw it to right up until my daughter was born and the last thing I put in the trunk so when my when I didn't take the trunk with me and it's been in it's never it hasn't always been in the house it's been in garages it's been in sheds it's been you know it's in pretty good condition there, yeah really yeah because I made sure that nothing happened to it and you know it's been in spare room it's been in storage would you say this is the first item that you had that you brought that you had around with a spirit attached yeah but I didn't realize that's yeah. what it was yeah but see, my grandmother had a whole lot of antique furniture in her house too, and there's probably, God help the people who got that now, because my grandmother's bedroom suite has a spirit attached, but mm. it's not a nice yeah. one. So this was, this was the ghost. This was that, it wasn't the first spirit I spoke to. The first spirit I spoke to was rather scary looking and used to hang by a rope in my wardrobe don't know what he was he had big glowing blue eyes and pointy teeth and he used to kick my brother out of bed when he annoyed me but this is probably the closest thing to a, I've got to a, a past loved one because I don't have that many past loved ones that have passed over that connect because they don't believe it my mum's side of the family they don't believe it he's lost and he mm. found family and his home is the box and his family is me so just just last thoughts on on everything that's happened tonight and what you've picked up on and what's been said what what's if it, has anybody got any last thoughts do you, you need to oh, i just feel the original story isn't the story no there's something missing, majorly. Yeah. 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 Whether it's just being but I don't think or... I don't think he remembers exactly what happened either. Mm. I don't think he wants to remember. Yeah. I think that's it. But I, I think, think it's like a, you know, Chinese whispers that yeah. every time it's been told, it's been changed that little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think that what actually happened isn't what we were told. I have to turn my phone on because Yeah, yeah that's, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was just yeah. for the K two. Yeah. But um, I think what was told was a degree <coughs> of the truth mm. yeah and i don't think he remembers what the actual truth is because he hasn't crossed over he hasn't found the light he's been this has been his world and wherever this was that's where he was that's what i picked up with the yeah. confusion yeah he doesn't mm. really and like when you were all saying that someone said that he was missing the top of his head yeah i heard him say that's because they blew it off yeah but so, I also think you and I are picking up on Bethany. Yeah. Yeah. You better not keep no, your other half away Because he's about to... I was to, checking the time to yeah. make sure that it wasn't. Okay. He was about to... What do you reckon, Bray? Yeah, I don't know. That's don't a know. mystery. Still a mystery. Yeah. Still a mystery. Sally? That was that's what I ever um, got from the things the yeah. mystery. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because I don't think he knows what happened. I don't think he remembers. And the other, the irony of it all is the epilepsy and that I have and the problem I'm having at the moment with my nervous system. They don't know where that came. The mystery is they don't know where that came from either. They Do you can't think he's it. got to that stage where he just feels he doesn't need to know. I think he's got to the stage where he just doesn't want to. He doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to remember. He it. I don't no, think I'd want to know no either. He has no need to either. Yeah. And yeah. he's happy wherever and he's not I am. Interested. Mm -hmm. I think it was fairly traumatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's happy it's wherever not I am. He wants to relive. And his his headspace is as long as because when I was out in the kitchen, he was calling me Kit. As long as Kit's happy, then that's all that matters. I don't know where Kit, Kit's probably shot for kitten because I've had a couple of Kit is a very common name back yeah. in the wall. Yeah, Kit. <laughs> I've got another soldier that calls me kitten, and I've got another one that calls me girly. They're locals, yeah. but you said as long as Kit's happy, then I'm happy. So, I think he's just happy that that's where I am. Yeah. There you go. Any more last comments? You right? Yeah. yeah. I better go too. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. No worries. Well, thanks everybody for, for being a part of that. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you. It's obviously still going to be a mystery for quite some time. But mm. 
I'm surprised, you never know. Bethany, that you haven't solved it. <laughs> well, I didn't realise we're, we're you were working there. on it. We're working yeah. on it. You don't you know, remember. And it may take some time reason. before we actually solve this mystery. I didn't realise I had psychic abilities until I met Rick. Like